the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. My dear brothers and sisters, we all know that Islam is a complete way of life. The Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said, Khayrul umuri awsatuha. Moderation, no ifrat, no tafrit. Everything has to be in a manner taught by the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And every human being created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are two types of hukuk two types of right on each and every one. One is Hukukul Ibad and the other one is Hukukullah Azza wa Jal. A person who is neglect, neglectful towards one of these Hukuk, he is not following the right path. He is not fulfilling what he is required of. You see the life of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, his life in masjid, his life in his house, his dealings, his taking care of all the affairs of the country, the Muslim uh, ummah, everything you see is, is balanced. So having a balanced life is required by the Sharia. Some people, you see them, their all focus is on ibadat. They pray too many nawafils and their sajdas are too long. And sometimes when they start leading the prayer, sometimes you see the people, they, they, they don't know what to do after that. You know, once a person is gone and such that, you know, that is not what the Prophet has taught us. Some people have. Uh, you know, some people sometimes complain that uh, I was, I almost had a heart attack, you know. Some people have, yeah, there is limit for everything. And tahajjud, mashallah, pray at night. But when it comes to hukuk of uh, people, you see that person, whatever he says that, he makes other people burn. You know, and then he becomes happy, you know, roasted. And then, <clears throat> His actions, mashallah, everybody is being hurt. And uh, if, you, if he talks, he is just like a very sharp knife, you know, making fun of all the people. So torturing, making people go into deep grief, people, you know, letting them, uh, you know, being humiliated in front of people, that is the purpose of some people. And on the other hand, Azkar, mashallah, after Maghrib, after Fajr, Azkar. <coughs> At night, Tahajjud, after every Salah, Nawafir, before every Salah, Sunnah. All these things are performed, but at the same time, Hukukul Ribad is totally gone. Another, uh, on the other hand, the opposite group, you must have heard the name of uh, what's his name? This man the dead guy. What's his name? Uh, the famous one. Uh, Abdul Sattar. Abdul Sattar Eidi. In '94, we had a big, big fundraiser in, in a very big, uh, you know, banquet hall. And uh, Dr. Asrar, you or most of you know him. Dr. Asrar was a very very beautiful scholar, you know. And uh, just to let you know, this uh, al Bayina's head, what's his name? Naman Ali Khan. The way he teaches Arabic, he learned it from Dr. Asraf. But he definitely, he improved it much, much more than earlier. And the way he puts it is amazing. May Allah reward him and uh, give him more uh, strength, tawfiq, to serve the community, serve the ummah. Amazing. The way he puts things, you know, we need to appreciate that. The other person, he was invited, Dr. Asra and uh, Abdul Sattar Edi. We thought that, you know, our president at Muslim Center was a member, <coughs> Gujarati, Gujarati member, uh, Ibrahim Dunat. He was an amazing guy. May Allah enter him Jannah. 
he built that mosque, mashallah, in the nineties, a million dollars was a lot of money. You know, now a million is nothing, you know. It used to be a million dollars was a lot of money. So we had uh, a fundraiser. We expected that we will get at least about three hundred thousand dollars from it. And we invited uh, Ethi just for one reason that all the memons will give money when they see him. Before Dr. Asrar, he came in and uh, he started speaking. What he said, uh, it was, you know, you cannot even imagine. He said, uh, they are asking me to raise the money for the masjid. I'm not going to give a penny. I have millions and millions in my account, but I'm not going to give for the masjid. I believe in serving the community. I believe in serving the community. There is no need for masjid. You guys made masjid and Pakistan became two Pakistans, one Bangladesh and another Pakistan. That's how he talks. And t uh, ten years later, the guy came to Al Farooq Masjid in Atlanta to raise the money, the masjid. And he was sitting behind me. I didn't know that he is here. A Mammon guy comes to me, Haji Adad. He said, Ethi is here and he wants to raise the money. He said, no money for Ethi. I said, no money for Ethi. He said, why? I, I told him the story and he was sitting behind me. <laughs> After Salah, he came to me. I said, we need to correct your Qibla, Sheikh. You have to balance. Service is re required. The Prophet said, Inna Allah abdi madam al abdi But you cannot neglect the other part, which is ibadat. Without ibadat, you cannot enter Qibla. You do the service all, all your life. It's not beneficial until you have Imam. If there is no Imam, there is no benefit of the service. So that's how people are in two extremes in this. Both of them are definitely wrong and they are in contrast with the teachings of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On the day of judgment, according to a hadith, Abdullah ibn Unais narrates, he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call He will say that no one will enter Jannah and no one will enter Jahannam until I fulfill the rights of all humans. Meaning that whoever's right is on somebody, he has to pay for it. According to a hadith, even it will extend to the animals. So whatever right I have violated of anybody, that has to be given back to him and I have to have forgiveness from him in order to enter Jannah or, you know, there are chances that my ibadat and my all good deeds are gone in vain. <coughs> but Israel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned them seven years from now, even more than that, drought. Severe drought. People are dying. People are eating meat of dead ones. They reach that level. They would go to the mountains, working hard, making dua. Oh Allah, remove this difficulty from us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a wahi to Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. He said, Musa informed them that even if they become like a dry lash by doing ibadah, spend all their nights at ibadah, the whole day in fasting, I will not accept their <coughs> But they are not giving the rights of other people, violating the rights of other people. My dear brothers and sisters, Hadith of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala tells us, the one who forgives other people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment is going to forgive that person. There is a story, we always learn from the stories, and I try to find some story related to my subject. The reason for that is that that is the only thing which sticks, stays in our minds. And there are lessons. There are lessons. What, why the Quran is called Qisas? In Qisas there is a lesson for all of us. It is reported that a man who was known for his piety <coughs> went for Hajj and he stayed at some place, you know, for a few days and had some money 
you know, people used to carry their money with them because there were no banks. No Bank of America, no Wachovia, no one else, Fargo, nothing. What do you have, you have. You know, that's why a traveler, you can give him zakat even if he is a, you know, a filthy million. You know, how, how much money does he have, it doesn't matter. You can still give him zakat. So, <clears throat> he had all money in his, in his uh, keys, in his uh, bag. And uh, the guy came and scratched it from him and ran. <coughs> A little further, he felt that I am losing my eyesight. He became blind. Now he started thinking. He said, this man must be a pious man, that I have taken his mind. Started crying. People came to him. They said, what happened? He said, this is what happened. Anybody knows him? They said, no. He said, where did this happen? He said, right for you. Uh, in front of that barber's shop. Okay, let's go and find him. He said, I want to go to this man and I, have to give, I want to give him his money back. <coughs> so they found that barber. They talked to him. He said, I don't know him personally, but I have seen him for a couple of days that he passes by my, uh, my shop when the time of Salah comes. They waited until the man came and uh, he ran towards him and put his head on his feet. He said, forgive me. He said, what happened? He said, this is what happened. And I want you to make dua that Allah returns my eyesight and this is your man plus. I don't need it. Please forgive me and I will never do it again in my life. He said, but I have forgiven you already. He said, I didn't even ask you for forgiveness. I took you all your money and you are going for Hajj. You don't know what to do. You have no way to go to continue your journey. And you have forgiven me. He said, yes, uh, I have forgiven you and there is a reason for it. <coughs> he said, what is the reason? He said, the reason is that I have read a hadith of the Prophet <laughs> that on the day of judgment, when the accounts of Ummah will be presented in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will be standing right next to the scale. I will be standing right next to the scale and I will not leave that spot and will not go to Jannah until the last person of my Ummah is his decided about him. And in a hadith Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, everybody has to pay the rights of others. When you took my money, you violated my right. And that is a qadiyya, that is a case, will be presented in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that will be a reason for delaying the entry of Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala into Jannah. And I don't want this to happen. That's how people used to think, my dear brothers and sisters. We get angry and uh, <clears throat> we are humans. You said something, okay, I let it go, I forgive you. In a hadith, the Prophet ﷺ praised that person who controls his anger and forgives. He said, not only a person who cannot, who cannot do anything, you know, when you can't do anything, that situation is different. Definitely you will get still having patience, you will get reward for it. But you have control over taking the revenge and you forgive. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala said, on every moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him on the day of judgment by seeing the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the reward of person who has who is angry and controls his anger. My dear brothers and sisters, there are two types of flies, bees and dirty flies. The bee is totally different than a dirty fly. The bee sits on the flowers and produces what? Nothing but Honey. The fundamental difference between these two things is that the fly, the regular fly, is a dirty fly, sits on nothing but impurities, searching for dirty things. Wherever finds any dirty thing will sit, even if your body will not sit at a clean place where there is, you know, some pus, blood coming or injury, it will go and sit over there. So it looks for nothing but Dirty things, likes nothing but 
dirty things and flies around only dirty things because that is what is made for. On the other hand, the bee searches, search for flowers, sets on the fruits, drinks the juice of the fruits and produces honey which is beneficial. So we will not be looking for anything but the gardens, the beautiful places, beautiful fruits. So the mind is good, looking for good things and producing something good. The same way humans are, my dear brothers and sisters. Some people are like bees and some people are like flies. Some people have good in them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created them and sometimes, you know, shaitan always misguides you. They do good, they ask other peoples to do good. When they look at other people, they don't see any faults, any problems. They see nothing but good. In other words, if you are good, you will find good people. You will see in everyone there is some good in it. And if you are bad, you will not look at anything but the bad in other people. All the faults of other people will be obvious in front of you. You will not see anybody has any goodness in him. You are unhappy with the scholars. You are unhappy with your parents. You are unhappy with, uh, with whoever is even doing good to you. You will say, oh, there, there must be some reason behind this. What are you going to get if I do that? And the society has become, has reached that level now. Sometimes if somebody tells you, you know, I want to do this for, you, this for you, you call somebody, ask him, how are you doing? He says, okay, Amdan Barbatla. Now, now, what is the point? Why you called me? Say, I just called you to find out how are you doing? No, nobody believes in that now. Because we are trained in a different manner. Not only that, even complains to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm unhappy with Allah also. Why he did this, why he did that, and this and that. So my dear brothers and sisters, we need to look at these two examples and see on which category we do we belong to. Then, move further. Those who are around us, we have forgotten their value. We humans, until we have that blessing, we don't know the real value of that blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know the real value of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know the real value of Al Quran al Kareem. We don't know the real value of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu wa ta'ala. We don't know the real value of what we have, the children I have, the wife I have, the parents I have, the brothers I have, the friends I have, until I lose them. <coughs> you see a woman complaining all the time, and once her husband is diagnosed with cancer, see how much she cries. The same thing happens to the husband. You know, both are same, you know, I'm not uh, blaming women or uh, men. You know, Maulana Rumi, a lot of people think that he was a Sufi. And uh, Sufis, you know, there are different types of Sufis also. Sufism has, uh, it's a long subject. Some of the things you learn from these people, sometimes, you know, it's amazing. I was reading uh, the story he has written in his uh, Muslim. He said there was a guy who used to sell Ritam. What do we call it now? There are stores called Perfume Mania, right? Right? Son, you don't know that? Perfume Mania? Yeah, there are stores. They sell perfumes only. Okay? So in Arabic, we call him Attar, Sah? Attar, yeah? And in Urdu also, we call, we call it Attar. The guy was smart. He had a shop to sell Atur. And we have one person who loves always Atur. MashaAllah, this is a good thing. The guy thought that there are so many shops of uh, Atarin. What can make my place unique that all the people come to my place to buy the item? <laughs> and he was lucky to have a parrot who used to speak. A parrot, they speak, you know, whatever you teach them. <coughs> so everybody comes to buy, uh, buy either from him or perfume from him. When he enters, 
the parrot says, Salaam alaikum. Imagine a person is entering and the parrot is saying, welcoming, Salaam alaikum. So people started coming to him just because of this. So his, became, his place became unique. All other people are leaving other places, even children who don't have any interest in perfumes and colognes and ever, they would tell them, I, I want to go there. You know, you can buy little place, little thing, but I have to go and see that uh, parrot. One day, this Attar, Muskeen, he closed his shop and uh, the parrot, he did not put him in the kafas. What do we call kafas? Cage. Cage. Forgot to put him in the cage. Muskeen. His time has come. <clears throat> At night, he is flying everywhere, sitting on the corner, and heard the cat meow. The cat did meow, and that's a death for cat. They get terrorized. You know, even if it doesn't attack, they, 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 they start losing. So, the parrot started flying everywhere. And the shop is full of all these little, little bottles here and there, and where it flies. You know, all these things are messed up, and all the bottles are broken. Everything is destroyed. Atar enters in the morning, and uh, he saw and figured out what happened. So he started hitting the parrot, Miskeen, Majanoon, my Shyama. Hit it so much that the the parrot lost the, the hair of the head. And parrots are very sensitive, you know. If you don't do good to them, they don't talk to you after that. Mm -hmm. Go closer to it, he will turn the face. I, I used to have one. You know, anything you bring even to eat, he will say, No, I don't want it. Upset. That's how the parrots are. I don't know. Now Anybody enters, quiet. No salam, no welcoming, nothing. One month, two months, three months. He lost all his customers who came. He said, Oh, I did not know the value of this parrot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed me with. And uh, kept on making dua, praying in the all night, making dua, oh Allah, make this uh, parrot speak. But there is no way. Because he did not know the value of that parrot when he was doing good to him. And the same way, we all do. Unfortunately, about Allah, about the blessings, about other people who are around us and so on. One day, a man entered his shop. He didn't have hair. He didn't have hair. The parrot saw that man and said to him, Did you all did you also break all the bottles of your master? <laughs> Spoke. And this is the word and sentence that Barrett said. We learned two things from this, he said. <clears throat> Number one, we need to realize the value of other people and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. The second thing he said, when the spirit saw that man, his bond, she thought it must, he must have done the same thing I have done to my masters and he got beaten up and he lost his hair too. So whatever is in me, I will think about other people. I have bad things here, I will think about other all people that they are bad to. So my dear brothers and sisters, with, with this, I conclude and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq to do whatever he does. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim ali wa lakum wa lisa'ili muslimina min kulli dham fa astaghfiruhu innahu wa lafur.